Hey there, I'm Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now it's been a bumper week for Linux distributions. Only a few days ago, I did a hands-on and a quick look of Ubuntu 18.04 and you can find the link to that just here. And now Fedora 28 has been released. So if you wanna find out more about Fedora 28, please let me explain. Okay, first of all, just a bit of history. Fedora gets its name because it's tightly related to Red Hat. And I have here a, a Red Hat. I don't work for Red Hat. I'm not sponsored by Red Hat, but I was at a show once and they were giving out these hats. So I picked one up. In fact, I have two, but that's a whole different story. Now, way back in 2003, the Red Hat distribution as it was then changed to the Fedora core distribution. And then a little while after that, it just changed to Fedora without the core bit. And basically Fedora is a community-based project that's a Linux distribution that is sponsored by uh, Red Hat. And Red Hat plows some money into that for some engineers and some other things. And then they take that kind of bleeding edge technology, what's kind of they've learned by building Fedora Core, and they kind of roll that back into their enterprise Linux uh, product, which is Red Hat uh, Enterprise Linux. So Fedora 28 has just been released, so let's have a look at how you download it, how you install it, and a quick look at the new features. Okay, to get Fedora is quite simple. You actually go to getfedora.org and then here you are presented with three versions, Workstation, Server and Atomic, which is what you use for um, containers like Docker. We're gonna go with Workstation, so you click here on Download. And then there is a program for Windows called Fedora Media Writer for Windows that you can download that will do it for you. You can also get ones if we click on View All Platforms for uh, Mac OS and also for Linux. So let's just click the Download here. Okay, once that's downloaded, you run it and you go through the uh, normal procedure here of installing it and that will just install on your PC. And of course, we want to run it now that it's installed. Okay, so this is telling us which version do we want to actually go and get uh, because it will actually do the download for you. It's worth mentioning here that there are various spins of uh, Fedora, including one with KDE, because the normal one, the default one, comes with GNOME, and look at all the other desktop versions that are available here, and Mate, and Cinnamon. So you can actually try out all of these, and uh, it will download it for you. And also you want to work out whether you want a 32-bit or a 64-bit. And the other great thing about this now is you can actually get this for ARM. So you can actually download this onto a Raspberry Pi, and even you can do it for some Chromebooks that have got ARM processors in them, for example. In fact, they're over at their website, there's a whole page that tells you about all the different hardware that will support uh, the ARM architecture. So we'll go for an Intel 64-bit, let's go for the workstation, and we say, yes, I wanna create a live CD. So it tells all about it here. So I'll say, yes, I want a live CD. It will do the download. And while that's happening, you can also pick here where you want to install it. This is a, a, drive, a flash drive that I've got installed in there. And once that's downloaded, you hit right to disk. And then you've got it on a USB drive and you can boot up your uh, PC using this uh, USB drive and then go for the install from there. Now, once your PC has been booted from the flash drive, you get presented with the Fedora uh, live desktop running and you've got a choice you can either click here on try Fedora just to try it out from the USB drive or you can click here to install to the hard drive where you'll then follow through the installation process to actually get it installed onto your hard drive. Okay, once booted, we get the welcome screen and here we can turn on or off automatic problem reporting or the use of location services. And then we hit next to go on to the next step. We can connect to our online accounts, including Google, Microsoft, and Facebook. You now need to create an account for yourself. So you type in your name, it will auto-generate a username for you and then you pick a password. Once you've done that, you're all ready to go. And now we need to log in using the username and password that we just set. And then up comes an initial help screen, a getting started screen to show you uh, some of the basic things you can do with the GNOME desktop, as well as actual content you can read. There are these videos here that show you some of the basic uh, things you can do. So we'll just click on one here to show you about switching tasks. And we can see uh, what you can do there. We won't watch all of it now, but it's a good, for, if you've never used Linux before, you never used GNOME before, this is great stuff for helping you get around the place. Okay, so let's go over to activities and then hit Firefox and let's start up the web browser. 
Now the default page is for Fedora Project, and we can see here all the announcements for Fedora 28, how to upgrade, what's new, and the actual announcement. Let's click on the what's new for Fedora 28 workstation, so we can look at the main big difference with Fedora 28. And here is the article, and if we scroll down a bit here, we will see this is the big ticket item, third-party repositories. Fedora has always prided itself in being completely free in terms of open source, but now there is the ability to use some of these uh, third-party repositories to get things like GNOME and NVIDIA's proprietary graphic drivers and a Steam client. So it will be interesting to see how uh, gaming works on Fedora using the Steam client. And it's worth mentioning that when you launch the GNOME software uh, center, you will be uh, alerted that you can enable these third-party repositories and we'll do that now in a moment. So let's go over to activities and then here we can see evolution is the default email climate. But right at the bottom here is the software center. And here at the top, look, this is access additional software from selected third party sources. Some of the software is proprietary and might not be free. We'll enable that to give us access to some of those things that we just talked about. And here we are inside the software center and you can see all the different applications that you can download for Fedora 28. Head back over to activities and let's go down to the file manager. This is very similar to what you'd find under Windows and under Mac OS. You kind of got all your documents and your downloads and you can see your home directory with all the key folders there. Very simple uh, but effective uh, file manager. And if we go right down here to the bottom, it will show you all of the applications are installed. First of all, just the frequently used ones. And if you click all here, you can see all of your uh, installed applications. We can just scroll down. There's not that many by default, but of course you can add more using the software center. And of course, if you just start typing once you're in activities, you can actually just find an application quickly, in this case, the terminal. So let's click on that and start up a terminal. And here is the terminal now, and now we're gonna type in uname minus A, and that will tell us a little bit about this system. And as we can see, it is running kernel 4.16.3. Okay, let's go back to the web browser and let's just click on the announcement. And there's just one quick thing that I wanted to show you here that was quite important, particularly if you use servers. And as we scroll down here, we can notice where it says here. So note here that ARM 64-bit is now a primary architecture for Fedora server. And so there you have it, Fedora 28. Well, my name's Gary Sims, and this is Gary Explained. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Also, you know what I'm gonna ask you, please subscribe, because we're trying to grow the community here. Please use the comments below to tell me what you think about Fedora 28. Please hit that bell notification icon so you become part of our notification squad, and do share this video on social media. Well, that's about it. I'll see you in my next video.